Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us and welcome to Mind Your Own Business. We're really lucky today to have Manny Turan, who is the CEO of more than one company, but most important today, uh, Spark Partners, which is uh, an amazing organization that actually helps you solve problems. So Manny, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And I was a little vague there in what Manny's uh, organization does, because you're going to learn about it here in a minute. So we're going to talk, you know, first today about, you know, what is it that customers really want? And uh, some of this is drawn from a study by Gartner that just came out on how sales and marketing need to be integrated in order to be effective. And I know, Manny, that's part of what Spark helps with. And so when I saw this, I thought of Manny, and then I went to church, and our minister talked about keys to an effective relationship. And just to summarize these quickly, be at peace with yourself, which is basically don't take your troubles and junk into somebody else's space. Let others be who they are. Make requests, not demands, which sales and marketing often communicate in form of demands. Uh, don't make others responsible for your happiness. You know, you need to figure out how to get what you need from yourself. And then be unconditionally concerned about the well-being of those in your life. You know, think win-win. So it, it seemed to me that these two kind of work together. And then knowing the incredible work that Manny and his partner do, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, I thought I would share a couple slides, and many, if you wouldn't mind, I mean, I'd love to hear kind of your general experience. Gardner said in its study, and this is a study of a number of companies, that companies that have sales and marketing alignment, which is a general sort of uh, measure, and we'll learn more about it in a minute, perform three times better in terms of acquiring revenue, selling than those that don't. Does that bear out with what you're seeing? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think it comes from a couple of different places, Steve. I think for one, the I think the biggest thing that is oftentimes not talked about is when sales and marketing collaborate, what they actually do is they better understand the customer. Mm. They understand the customer and what they're doing. And, and what really happens in organizations, as we see this a lot, is executive management gets upset at sales or marketing or both, and they blame sales. They blame marketing for not getting it right. And because of, uh, you know, if revenues aren't there, they usually go to sales and say, what's going on? But the real problem that's underneath the hood is that there is a misalignment with the product or service with the market. And Interesting. If, you're, if you're trying to sell something that nobody wants to buy, no one's going to buy it. But it's oftentimes the bias, um, the pride of the leadership that doesn't allow them to really see what people want. And when you have sales and marketing collaborating, they usually get to that answer much more quickly and are able to resolve it. Yeah. And I think a couple of the next slides highlight what you just said, is that if you treat sales and marketing as a human endeavor and don't leverage digital and tools, you're going to be significantly less likely to complete a good deal. At the same time, if you try to automate everything, and this is, there's a lot of talk right now about, hey, let's just take the sales and marketing people out of the equation and automate, that you, you know, you're gonna sell things that customers end up not wanting. And because it's going to force them into boxes without listening. And so it's interesting when you look at what they suggest, uh, and I really uh, love you to comment on this. This is exactly what you said, where when you start down this path of unification, um, you figure out real quick, you don't know enough about what the customer really needs, and you're probably feeling the wrong things uh, in those cases where it's hard to sell. But then you begin to apply learning and you start to learn about whether this customer fits your business. What are they, if what they need matches you. And then you can price it in the final stage once you've learned, you know, understand and then seek to be understood as Covey would say. Um, and if you've gone through this path, 
the sales percentage is higher and the confidence on the customer in what they're getting is much higher. So how does this feel to you, I mean, based on your real world knowledge? Yes, this is in complete alignment with what we talk about at Spark Partners and in my professional career. Uh, what's interesting is that if you uh, are sold something from somebody, and I use that word carefully, sold, rather than you buying something, um, and if, if what you're sold doesn't align with what you really wanted, you're going to tell people about it. You're not going to be happy about it. And, mm -hmm. and whether or not you're using uh, people or digital tools, it's kind of the same process at the end of the day is you're if you're not getting something you really want or need you're going to complain about it and you're not going to be satisfied and this whole idea of confidently buying more it's going to stop there and what we want to create in our businesses we don't want to create the the one trick pony customer that comes in and buys one thing and they're gone because acquiring customers is expensive we want to acquire that customer for life and in this day and age of people constantly changing brands You've got to be even more competitive to to retain your customers you do have, and every sing, treat every single sale as a brand new sale, from an engagement perspective, and you'll be able to go further faster. One last comment I'll make about uh, digital versus human: a digital tool is is just a tool. So if you load uh, cue balls and billiard balls into a tennis machine. You know those ones that shoot the shoot the, yeah. uh, the uh, tennis balls out. You're not going to be effective, even though you have the tool there, which is the tennis ball machine. By loading in the wrong stuff, you're not going to get anywhere near what you should be getting, and it's going to be potentially disastrous. It's a frightening visual, indeed. Um, so the last thing that um, this study, which I would encourage. Uh, our listeners to download if this feels like something that you want to explore and connect with Manny at uh, Spark Partners. Uh, he's on LinkedIn. He's, um, you know, Spark Partner website. But you, there are different maturity levels. And it's interesting, you know, at, you know, as an adult, I don't like to be uh, think of myself as not being mature. But our organizations, particularly ones that are like maturity level zero, sales and marketing are doing their own thing and they're not connected. Um, it dramatically impacts your performance as a company. It is one of the reasons some companies fail is we're doing the wrong thing, but we're doing it really hard. Um, when you have a client that comes to you What's the general situation that motivates them to seek help? Because we all think we can do this stuff ourselves, and we can't. Yeah, so there, there's kind of two main personas that come to us, um, and they're very, they're almost opposite. And let me kind of describe where they are. So you've got those that, that are very at the top level of being self-actualized, and they know that even though they're successful and they're doing very well, they know that there's going to be pitfalls and they come to us with a lot of cash and they've got abundance mindset and they've got the, the time and the patience to really make some lasting change to make their organization better, you know? And so those are pretty rare. Those are about 10% of our customers because what happens is of course, success makes you fat, dumb, and happy. And you don't think that your process is broken if you're successful and you oftentimes say, hey, we're successful. Look at us over there. Well, what do you think the Sears exec executive staff said in, in the year 2000, right? Oh, yeah, why, why do we even care about this company called Amazon? Who the hell are they? Well, we know where that story ended. The other customer base, the other 90%, are the ones on the other end of that spectrum. The boat is sinking. They have uh, people fleeing off the boat. They hit an iceberg, whatever you, whatever you want to uh, say about that analogy, but it's it's basically they're uh, on the wrong side of the revenue uh, framework. They're losing revenue, they're losing customers, and they're in this mode where they're desperate. And both of those customer uh, archetypes are a challenge to work through. What we do at the very beginning is we do an assessment of what is happening exactly, and we try to understand how aligned they are with emerging trends. 
And so while me and my partner are doing that, we also really look at the human element. Because at the end of the day, these decisions are being made by human beings that have pride and bias. And those decisions are oftentimes misguided. Uh, so it's always the, those difficult conversations that when they're ready, they'll absorb and actually make change. Otherwise, they're just going to watch that ship sink. Yeah. You know, as we think about real life, you know, and I'd like to hear a little more about your company. And I know we've got a couple of slides uh, from you, but in talking to our Vistage group, the number one issue that they all have or opportunity they want to capitalize on is growing faster, growing more revenue. So it's not always from a place of scarcity. As you said, it's from a place of abundance. But if I'm not constantly focused on getting better, then I can fall into that trap of becoming prey to somebody else. As you think about real life, um, talk a little bit about what you do and how you do it. I mean, I read the Gartner study. I feel like I need some help. What's sort of the next step and how do you help others? Sure. So Adam Hartung is, uh, is my partner. He's got a long history of working within large corporate. He worked at Dow. He worked at Computer Science Corporation as a, the chief strategist. Um, he worked at PepsiCo, and he, he architected the deal to uh, purchase Pizza Hut and, uh, and lots of other deals. Uh, but his background is in the innovation and business growth space. So um, he looks from the inside out and then from the outside in. And so I come to the table with a very similar and complementary skill set. And I look at uh, where is the organization from a personnel standpoint? Who are the, the leadership uh, that are involved with making decisions? And then we really work together to understand how to take their business and align it with trends. If you, you think about this as an analogy of you're putting your boat in, in, the, in a fast moving river versus a murky swamp. Um, it gives a really good analogy. If you're doing anything with AI, with the gig economy, with mobility, with asynchronous life, those are fast moving currents, right? These are, especially now, if you think about chat GPT, I mean, that is like a super fast current. You put your canoe in that and you're going to be going far, far fast. Now, if you're in some stagnant market, like for instance, oil and gas or something else of that nature, you're going to be putting it in a, in a, in a in a stagnant pool. Now, there's a lot of things here we, we can talk about, but you know our success is really derived and we've added about $3 billion of additional value to our customers by really helping them to understand their, their customers, understand their uh, competition, and most importantly, under, understand trends. And sort of being in the right business is probably more important adapting to that than being really good at closing business. Because closing things that people absolutely need creates retention, et cetera. And you know, Steve, oftentimes it's a matter of very slight adjustment in messaging and marketing. Sometimes it's a very slight adjustment in how the, the staff and personnel are operating. Maybe you've got to make a few operational changes. But ultimately, it all comes down to what do the customers really want? Uh, we right. worked on a project with a, a dog food bag manufacturer. So you, can, you think about those bags you buy treats in. Uh, they were a company that was uh, focused on making dog food bags. Well, when we started looking behind the hood to understand why they weren't growing, we, they understood that they were uh, making dog food bags. We saw something a little different. So we retooled their messaging a little bit, and we turned them from a dog food bag manufacturer to a dog food marketing company that just so happens to make dog food bags. So that slight adjustment took their revenue and their, um, their valuation and basically made it about 15-fold. Because wow. it would step into these, these customers' conversations, and rather than say, hey, listen, we make this kind of material for this dog food, this kind of material for this dog food. They said instead, look, we'll come in. We know how to sell dog food. We know that yellow um, sells more than blue. We know that a picture of a kid with a dog 
on the front cover sells more than a picture of mountains and so forth and so on. So they actually went in and did some revenue sharing with their customers. And they said, look, we'll make, we'll run your marketing for you. And as a result, we'll split the profits, the additional profits. And that's why they were able to, to take their valuation from, from here to 15 times that. Wow. So if folks want to connect with you, there are a number of different ways, but maybe talk about the best way to reach you, and then a little bit about your Trendsetter podcast, which I've always enjoyed. Sure. So the best way to reach me is at, at my email address is manny at sparkpartners.com. And so uh, that's, and we also have, uh, you know, all these other social media outlets. But the podcast is really centered around understanding trends and how to use them to grow your business. And, you know, there's some things to do with trends that are um, obviously in the in the center stage, like um, AI, but there's other ones that are not as center stage, but equally, if not more important. The one that we talk about a lot is demographics. Demo demographics is how people are living, where they're living, how they're dispersed. And so if you understand the demographics of a market, you're going to be making some good decisions. Like for instance, Japan has a, an extremely low birth rate to the point where in about 20 years, their culture will begin to erode. Um, China, for instance, also has a similar problem. And what does that mean? That means there's not enough people to do the work. In Japan, for instance, in, in about 20 years, uh, about a third of their population will be of retirement age. And so you add another 20 years to that. And so you know you're about half of the population will be retired. So who's going to go and do all the work that needs to be done? as an example. And if Japan is your number one market, it is shrinking. It's shrinking, exactly. Right now, yep. the, of the top 25 highest birth rate countries, all but one are in Africa. Fascinating. The one that is not is, in, is Afghanistan. So literally the top 25 highest that we're talking about uh, for each pair of people that are uh, counted, they're having five, six, seven kids, and their populations are exploding. So the, the, the African continent as a landmass is twice as big as the United States uh, and North America. I mean, it's massive. You can put the U.S., Europe, you can put Russia, you can put all those in there. It's, people don't really understand how big it is. Everybody's brainwashed with the, uh, um, the old maps that exist that really make the U.S. and Greenland really big. But in fact, there's not as big as, as uh, they really are. The so, yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. Now, the, the Mercator projection is the name of the, the map that we're, we've all been accustomed to in, in grade school. So we don't really understand how big Africa really is. So similar to that map, we look at our organizations, we tend to see it through the eyes you know, of our tenure. And if we've been in business a long time, been successful, you know, you, you talked earlier how we can be paralyzed by that. So listening to uh, your podcast, maybe ours, looking at organizations like Gartner who do seminal research, talking to Spark Partners, you know, if you have a revenue uh, issue or a value issue, if your company is in it, capitalizing on the growth that's out there right now, this is a great way to take that first step. Um, yeah, absolutely. For instance, our latest podcast, which was released this morning, is all about Gen Z. And really understanding the Zoomers and how they operate is very different than the millennials. I'll just give you one little piece of information. Millennials are very much aligned with the social and the societal and the environmental construct of these businesses. They want to work for a company that is doing good. And the pay is not as important. Well, what's interesting about Gen Z, this, these are the folks that are just entering the workforce. We're talking about 22, 23, uh, 24 year olds. They are much more interested in pay, like the Gen Xs, like myself. And like the uh, the older folks as well, so it's really interesting to to see how that that they're very much different than the millennials. 
So, you know, I want to thank you for the time today. We could do this, you know, for hours. And um, I would suggest to our audience, if any of this rings true to you, uh, it's easy to connect with Manny. He's a great person and a great uh, resource. Check out Gartner. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. So Manny, thank you for being here. Thank you. All right, you take care. And uh, everybody, thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you.